Hello everyone. I am your friend Shadab Imam and currently we are dealing with the topic of simulation under operations research. And today we are going to see a problem on weather forecast. So please watch this video till the end and if you are new to the channel, please subscribe the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. So let us move ahead with the lecture. First of all, let us have a recap of the steps in Monte Carlo simulation. So the first step is to find the objective of the problem. So here we need to find whether our objective is to maximize or to minimize a value. Then we need to determine the variable that interests the objective. Here we need to identify the variable which affects the objective function or which will affect the maximum or minimum objective value. Next is to determine the probability. Now probability is either given in the problem directly or otherwise we need to calculate the probability of event and then we need to calculate the cumulative probability here then we need to select the random numbers using the random number tables here in monte carlo simulation random numbers are either directly given in the problem otherwise we need to calculate or select these random numbers using the random number tables then we need to find out the random number allocation. Now in random number allocation, we need to find out that the selected random numbers fall into which of the random number interval. Now in a meanwhile from now, we will be able to understand what is random number interval. And after finding the random number allocation, we will be able to determine the corresponding variable of the interest. That means we will be able to find out the value of variable we have selected earlier. And after getting the values of the variable, we will be able to simulate the model for the given number of events. So these are the steps in Monte Carlo simulation. Now let us understand this with the help of problem. And this is our problem. Question says that the occurrence of rain in a city on a day is dependent upon whether or not it rained on the previous day. If it rained on the previous day, the rain distribution is given by this table. So here, if it rained in the previous day, the event is no rain, 1 cm rain, 2 cm rain, 3 cm rain, 4 cm rain and 5 cm rain. And their corresponding probabilities are given. And if it did not rain the previous day, the rain distribution is given by, here also we have events like no rain, 1 cm rain, 2 cm rain, 3 cm rain and their corresponding probabilities. Now simulate the city's weather for 10 days and determine by simulation the total days without rain as well as the total rainfall during the period. And the random numbers are given in the problem. So these are 10 random numbers for 10 days. And assume that for the first day of simulation it had not rained the day before. So let us see what are the key points given in the problem. The problem here says that the occurrence of the rain in a city is dependent upon whether or not it had rained on the previous day. So we need to find out whether or not it had rained on the previous day. And there are two tables given. First is when it had rained on the previous day. So if it had rained on the previous day these events will be possible. Similarly, if it did not rain the previous day, then we will have this event probability. Now, we need to simulate the demand for 10 days and we need to find the total number of days without rain as well as total rainfall during the period. That means during these 10 days. And we need to assume that first day of simulation it had not rained the day before that means starting day of the simulation it had not rained the day before so let us move ahead with the problem and let us see the solution to simulate the weather we need to find the random number allocation for both cases that is when it rained the previous day and when it did not rain on previous day so Let's find the random number allocation when it rained on previous day. And this is the random number that is mentioned in the problem. 
and this is the table we need to draw first is event so this is mentioned in the problem for the situation when it rained on previous day and these are the corresponding probabilities now we will find out the cumulative probability so these are the cumulative probability and then we will find the random number interval now here we need to be very careful to calculate or to determine the random number interval in random number interval we will see that the cumulative probability is 0 0.50 and we will assume it as 50 or we can say that we will move this decibel sign two places ahead so this will be 50 now we will take the value from 0 to 49 and we will left out the 50th value and this random number will be 0 to 49 and we will left out the 50th value now 50th value will be the starting value of the next row and here the cumulative probability is 75 so here we will left out the 75th value and our random number interval will be from 50 to 74 now we will start the 75th value from third row and the cumulative probability is 90 so we will left out the 90th value and the random number interval will be 75 to 89 here we will similarly calculate the random number interval for the remaining table so here we have calculated this and now we need to find out the random number allocation now in random number allocation we will see the random numbers that are given in the problem and we will see if these random numbers fall in which of the random number intervals so the first random number is 67 so we can see that 67 falls between 50 to 74 so here the event 1 or day 1 with random number 67 falls between 50 to 74 and it suggests that it will have rain about 1 centimeter similarly we will select the second random number which is 63 and 63 lies between 50 to 74 so here the second event with random number 63 lies between 50 to 74 and this shows that it has a rainfall of 1 centimeter similarly the third random number 39 and we can see that 39 lies between 0 to 49 so here we can see that the third event which is having random number 39 falls between 0 to 49 and this shows that the event is no rain now similarly we will find the random number allocation for the remaining random numbers so here we have calculated it now let us move ahead and now let's find out the random number allocation when it did not rain the previous day so in the previous table we have calculated the random number allocation when it rained on previous day and here we are going to find out the random number allocation when it did not rain the previous day so let us find out here these are the random numbers mentioned in the problem now this is the table again these are the events given in the problem no rain 1 centimeter rain 2 centimeter rain 3 centimeter rain and these are the given probabilities now let us first calculate the cumulative probability here so here this is the cumulative probability we have calculated now we'll find the random number interval so here also it is 0 0.75 so we will consider it as 75 and we will left the 75th value and we will take the value from 0 to 74 so here we have taken the value from 0 to 74 and we will start the next row with the value 75th which we have left here and we can see here that the cumulative probability is 90 0 0.90 so what we'll do is we will left out the 90th value and we will take this random number interval up to 89 so here from 75 to 89
9 similarly we will calculate the random number interval for the remaining values and now let us move to calculating random number allocation so here random numbers are given so we will see these random numbers fall within which random number interval so the first one is 67 67 is falling between 0 to 74 so this is event 1 random number 67 falls between 0 to 74 which suggests that the event will be no rain similarly the second random number is 63 and 63 as we can see here that event 2 random number 63 falls between 0 to 74 and this shows that the event will be no rain similarly the next random number is 39 so event 3 random number 39 falls between 0 to 74 and it will have event as no rain now similarly we will find out the random number allocation for the remaining random numbers here so these are the random number allocations here let us see we need to now simulate the forecast for 10 days now in order to do so we need to find this table and the first column is days so we are going to simulate for 10 days so day 1 2 3 4 up to 10 here and these are the random numbers so random numbers have already given in the problem so these are the random numbers in the problem and this is the event when it rained previous day so previously we have seen two tables first one is when it rained on previous day and the second one is when it did not rain on previous day so from the first table we will be able to find out these values so here from the first table we have find out that for random number one the event will be one centimeter rain for random number two or we can say day two the event will be one centimeter rain and so on so these are the values we have found in the first table similarly in the second table we have find out the events when it did not rain on the previous day so from there we will be able to find out these events that is for day one the event will be no rain for day two the event will be no rain for day three the event will be no rain and so on so here we need to understand that these two values are the values we have calculated in the previous tables so let us move ahead and this is the final forecast we are going to do and for the first day of simulation it had not rained the day before so as we have seen in the problem the rain depends on whether or not it had rained on previous day and for the first day of simulation it had not rained the day before so we will see the table where the event is when it did not rain the previous day so on the basis of this we will select the values from this second chart or with this particular column so we can see that the here event for day one is no rain so we can see that our final forecast will say that for day one event will be no rain now once the event is finalized for day 1 we will move to day 2 and from day 2 we need to understand that we need to find out whether it had rain on day 1 or not so in day 1 we can see that here there is no rain again we will see this column which say that when it did not rain previous day so for day 2 the event here is given as no rain so the final event will be no rain now moving on to day 3 we need to find out whether it had rained on day 2 or not so on day 2 we can see that here the event is no rain again we will see the event from this column which says that when it did not rain the previous day so day 3 the event will be no rain so here also the event is no rain moving on to day 4 
again we will see whether it had rained or not on day 3 so as we have seen here in our final forecast it had no rain on day 3 so again we will see this particular column and the value corresponding to day 4 is no rain so again we can see here that for day 4 the forecast is no rain now moving on to day 5 again we will see whether it had rained or not on day 4 so from here we can see that day 4 has no rain so again we will see this particular column and we can see that the event on the day 5 is no rain so here in final forecast the event will be no rain now on day 6 we can see that the event on day 5 is no rain so again we will see this particular column when it did not rain on previous day and we will be able to find out that the event for day 6 is 1 cm rain here. So the final forecast will be 1 cm rain. Now moving on to day 7, we need to see whether it had rained on day 6 or not. So for day 6, we can see that here we have 1 cm rain that means it had rained on the previous day. So we will see this particular column where our event is when it rained the previous day. So from this we can see here that the rain is 1 cm rain. So our final forecast will be 1 cm rain. Now moving on to day 8, again we will see whether it had rained or not on day 7. So as we know that on day 7 we had 1 cm rain. And then again we will see this particular column when it rained previous day. So this column says the event will be no rain. So the final forecast here will be no rain. Now moving on to day 9. Here we can see that day 8 is having the forecast as no rain. Now we will select this particular column when it did not rain the previous day. So for day 9 the event will be 1 cm rain. So here the event is 1 cm rain. Now moving on to the final day, day 10, we need to see whether it rained or not on day 9. So on day 9, we can see that here is 1 cm rain and this means that we will follow this particular column when it rained previous day. So the event here will be 2 cm rain. Now this is the final forecast we have done. Now let us see from here that what are the outcome we had from this particular simulation. So after simulating the forecast, following points are found out. First is for the first 5 days there is no forecast of rain. So as we can see from the table the first 5 days there is no probability of rain. Second is the total number of days without rain are 6. So there are 6 days when we have no rain. The total rainfall during the period of 10 days is 5 cm and the maximum rainfall on a day is 2 cm. So these are the outcomes from this simulation. I hope you understand the lecture. So please like this, subscribe the channel and share this video. Have a nice day. Thank you.